Hello, everybody. Wow. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Wow. 11 a.m. a bit different. Yeah. <laughs> They're still waking up earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but still, so happy to see all of you. Yes. All right. Um, hi, Felicia. Hey, and um, it's good to see all of you here today. And can we just give, it, give her a big hand again, you know, just to <laughs> encourage her. Woo! This is the third time, you know, she's sharing her story. Oh, cool. All right, to begin, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I think this place is a very special place to me. Sanctuary because last year I got married right here at the sanctuary. Woo! Did anybody witness or watch it online? Wow, no bad, no bad. I got a few. Yes, yeah, a special place. Uh, BBTC is my home church. Oh, you even got uh, yeah, the photo right here on stage. Uh, whenever I hear a thousand hallelujahs, I think of that day because that day Olivia uh, sang the song beautifully. I used to live in Bado. I live really nearby. I have always passed by BBTC ever since I was a young kid. I used to cycle with this, uh, this boy that I used to like. Like, uh. <laughs> cycle pass, uh, never pay too much attention. Uh, maybe on the way to get some bar chow mee or porridge at Block 85. It was a good memory, but never did I ever once thought that I would end up you know, in church and sharing on this stage. So uh, today is a really a special memory for me. We're just so happy that you're in BBTC. And uh, we know that you are one who is very talented, you know, very gifted, and also very cheerful. Uh, whenever I hear your laughter, I know you're somewhere around. <laughs> and uh, not only so, but, um, you know, but we, 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 we know you a lot you know, in regards to what um, you're doing in the, in the media. Why don't you share with us a little bit about uh, what did, where was it like you know, when you were a little girl? When I was a little girl, I think I was a very fearful child. My parents brought, up in the, brought us up in the best way that they could. Unfortunately, at home, sometimes it's quite chaotic. There's certain friction. Sometimes there were unhappy moments. I think they tried their best. But I grew up in a fearful environment. What made it even more, I want to say, enhanced... In school, it didn't help that um, I had a form teacher. I remember when I was seven years old, first day of school, wearing my little uniform, I was asked to the front of the class by my form teacher. I remember her name, but I shan't, I shan't say her name. Baby Stone. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember her name 32 years later. Must be quite traumatic. <laughs> she asked me to come from, I forgot what I did, honestly. Well, what could a small little fearful child do on the first day of school, right? I think she was very, very angry. I remember she pulled my cheek. Stretch, 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 stretch. <sighs> to the furthest, you know. And then her arm also go, wow, all the way to the back and just, pia. And she slapped me in front of everybody in the class uh, when I was a, a, was a young, young girl, uh. I think growing up, my, my relationship with my teachers, they, some are really good teachers, but somehow, sometimes, some teachers left a traumatic like, scar in my heart. La. I remember there's this physics teacher when I was like 15 years old. Um, everybody, you know, uh, we wanted to go overseas. And he told everyone that my friend would get A in O levels. But Felicia, B3 good enough for you. If you get B3, very good already. Then I'm like, oh, I, I mean, all this stay with you a little bit, like, you know, oh, am I not good enough, you know? So I grew up with a bit of that kind of feeling, you know, um, fearful of being not good enough. Didn't help that my roots of ever since I was a kid at seven years old, my teacher slapped me. Uh, the class was segregated from worst to the best. Orange were the worst group. Apple were the best group. In the middle, I forgot which fruit. Durian, durian. Durian. <laughs> if it's durian, I don't mind being in durian. <laughs> I like durian. Me too. So, <laughs> I work really, really hard to be in an apple, to be an apple. Because the oranges, right, very poor thing, like, will get punished lah. And I work very hard. I don't want to make mistakes. I want to be the good books of my teacher. So I grew up in such an environment, quite fearful. 
I mean, um, to know that uh, happens in school, um, not so nice, especially when I was a teacher, you know. <laughs> I'm uh, sure us, you know, you're us. not a teacher yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how is it like, you know, then at home? You know, since uh, you talk about your school, how is it like to, for your family? I think it helped that my dad was like the anchor of the family. But unfortunately, at 17 years old, when I was 17 years old, my dad passed away due to cancer. And sometimes I look back with a tinge of regret and guilt. Oh, this is my dad. He, I always feel like he looks like a tiger. His face looks a bit like a tiger. I always think of him like that. He likes to watch uh, Net Geo and all the documentaries. That I'm about seven. And this is actually our last family trip together in Phuket. Thankful for this photo. Sometimes the way he looks sometimes gets a bit blurred in my mind. But thankful for this photo and um, back to what I was sharing. I see my dad's photo, I forgot what I was sharing already. <laughs> slowly, slowly. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. He, at 17, you know, he was diagnosed with late, last stage cancer. What I was a bit regretful then was something that I did to him. I never knew whether it hurt him or how he felt. But there were moments where he was doing chemo and he was at home, struggling with pain, with his back. And sometimes at the living room, he would struggle to get the remote control and he would ask me for help. But then, you know, at 17, I didn't know better. I thought, chemo, okay, wah, just chemo, finish really, you'll be well. In my eyes, he's quite well. And I would say things like, why don't you get it yourself? Yeah, and sometimes irritated tone some more. Looking back, I, I've, I feel regretful. I'm so sorry if it hurt him then. But sometimes, you know, as a child, there are some things that you have done wrong, I guess. And um, thankful to spend a bit of good memories with him before he passed on. He was the anchor of the family. At 17, I didn't understand that. But my actions after that made me realise that he... My world collapsed. I remember when he passed on, I wasn't by his side. And the only thing that I could see was actually the nurse wrapping up his body in the hospital as me and my sister rushed to see him, but it was too late. I remember I didn't know how to digest my emotions. I ran out of the room along the corridor, hide in a corner and was just shocked. I didn't know how to digest these emotions. I guess nobody also helped me with this digestion and things started derailing. I guess I tried to find love and affirmation in the wrong places. My family was quite broken due to the loss of my dad. I think my mom had to digest her own emotions. My sister and I needed love and help as well and the family was quite broken. At 18, you know, I took part in a competition and it started me on my route in society. And it's not easy because I have no experience. Sometimes it's quite tough. There are moments or quite a number of times where I feel lost. I didn't know who to turn to. You might feel hurt by what happened at work. Sometimes you might feel wronged. You might feel nobody understands. Who can you trust? Who can you turn to? And it didn't help that sometimes headlines will splash things about me that is not true. And the headlines just end, ends with a question mark. So, uh, you know, it, it is still okay. I mean, there are things that happened in the past that affected me quite a bit. I remember when I was in my early 20s, about 20, 21, there were nights where I would uh, be very sad with things at work. I used to binge eat, eat a lot. I will eat like two plastic bags full of ice cream, la, chips, la, everything. Just try to numb whatever that I'm feeling inside. When nothing helps, you know, I would walk um, to the kitchen. Those nights where I was alone, midnight, you know, mom is sleeping. I'm all alone walking to the kitchen and I'll kneel down. Kneel down, look at the dark skies. I would feel like nobody really understands me. I'm all alone. Uh, who can I turn to? Feeling very sorrowful and I'll cry and cry and just pour out my heart to whoever is up there. I don't even know who is up there. Maybe there's a God up there. I'm not sure. And as I was crying, I would say things like, 
Everyone has a dad. Why don't I have a father? It's so unfair. You know, I want someone to lead me. I want someone to guide me. Someone to protect me. But I don't have a father. And it affected me quite a bit. After crying for like half an hour, I'll wipe my tears and I'll go back to bed. You know, the new day starts again. I think it happened at least twice in my early 20s. So as you get older, do you find that uh, these feelings, you know, um, go away or uh, you learn to manage it better? I don't think I learned to manage it better. I learned to suppress it better. <laughs> I learned to probably put up a brave front that everything is okay. I used to be one that is um, fearful of asking people for help because it does it mean that um, I'm not doing a good job, I wasn't responsible. I felt bad for asking for help. So, for example, recording a song, right? Wow, I struggle, I struggle, but I see everybody's faces like a bit frustrated or what? Then I'll be like, oh, it's my fault, it's my fault. Then I will keep all these emotions to myself. So I had it, I was harsh onto myself. And I think it compounded in 2015. You know, that's eight years ago. I was filming a drama. It's called Life, Fear Not. Uh, quite contradictory because I had a lot of fears inside of me. Maybe it's a reminder to not fear in life. I have a fear of um, things like, stupid things like, what if the light dropped down? How would I continue shooting? What If my co-star don't say the next line, how should I react? Would it be good enough? You know, there's a lot of good enough, what if, a lot of doubts came to my mind. Anybody have doubts in your mind? Oh, <laughs> okay. All of you stronger than me. <laughs> um, yeah, don't worry, this light won't fall down, okay? It's just a, a symbolic thing that I'm pointing to. Yeah, I have all these doubts and I, um, I was from another religion eight years ago. I went to a religious place to pray every morning at 6am just to seek help. Nobody can help me, my friends couldn't help me. And finally, it culminated three weeks later. I was all alone in the toilet. I suddenly remember that someone told me that God is real. And that is the very first time I started speaking to this God who my friend told me is real. Yeah. So how, how do you just um, get to know this God and I mean Jesus a bit more? Can you share with us a bit? Okay. Um, it started with my softball coach. So, Elder Hock Chai shared that I was, used to be a national softball player. Uh, this is my coach, Coach Josephine. This is me when I was 16. She was the one that saw potential in us that, you know, nobody's can be a national player. She's one with a very, very big heart. Uh, eight years ago, I had news that she had a relapse of cancer. Third, third time. I reached out to her. And she told me that day that she is going to do her chemo, then going to the vet to bring her three dogs. Her dog's quite big. And I was like, when I put down the phone, something just bugged me that if I don't help her that day, I will never live with myself for the rest of my life. I cannot. So I pushed away a work meeting. I met up with my coach, brought her to the vet with her dogs and spent the whole day with her. At the end of the day, it suddenly occurred to me that I could bring my coach uh, for a travelogue that I was about to film. That was the meeting that's supposed to happen, you know, who to bring, etc., etc. Uh, my mom didn't really want to be in, in, in media, so I suddenly thought, maybe I can bring my coach. It's a miracle because the, the travelogue is supposed to be for family, blood ties. But somehow they agreed, my coach agreed, and we went to Sydney together. My coach is Christian, my producer is Christian, my scriptwriter was Catholic, they will worship, they will pray before meals. And it's, I guess I don't have many Christian friends. To see them praying before meals, I'm like, wow. Not bad. You know, this sense of thankfulness, the worship is nice. So I, I had a good impression. So fast forward three weeks later in the cube, no, no, not three, six months later in the cubicle, I remember that God is real. Probably my coach shared that with me. And I started talking to this God. Lah. I said, 
I have a lot of doubts in my mind. Can you please help me clear my mind? I can't concentrate at work. So after this simple few lines, I just went out, you know, and went, went back to work. Then when I stepped into the studio, can you all guess what happened? What? what? The light the dropped light down. Down. <laughs> 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 So funny. <laughs> <laughs> the light, uh, unfortunately, still didn't drop. Yeah. Still there, still there. <laughs> Life, you're not. Um, uh, it didn't drop, but something in my head happened. You know, <laughs> all the fears disappeared, all the doubts disappeared, and I was like, "Wow, so clear. Huh? How come? Huh? What happened?" And I immediately felt like this God, like not bad, like quite special. <laughs> like, wow, my un- my prayer like answered. Huh? Wow. Oh, a bit different. So I called um, my coach. How many of you came here because your friend invited you? Family invited you? Keep bugging you as you come church? Okay, maybe some people are too shy. But my coach was like that. He will text me, you want to come church? It's Christmas. You want to come church? It's Easter. And I politely declined. But when I encountered that, right, I thought of her. I called her to bring me to church the very next day. It was a weekday afternoon. It's a rented space with a lot of youth, you know, studying, playing basketball. Nothing like so spiritual. But once I stepped into the space, I felt all the fears inside me disappear. I, I guess I grew up with a lot of fears, you know, from age, I don't know, zero to 31. I was like, wow. All the fears disappeared and I felt a lot of love. The best way to describe it, I guess, is like cascading waves of love pouring over me. And it felt very unjudgmental. Like, no matter how sinful I felt I was, but hey, somehow I'm very loved, you know. That's how I felt. And my pastor, Pastor Leo, shared with me that that was very uh, biblical. Like, God says... Perfect love expels all fears. And that was how I felt then, you know? My fears really just away. So do you believe in Jesus then? Because we know you are a Christian now. So when do you believe in Jesus? I believe like one month later. Yes. What happened? Not immediately though, for me. Um, I, was, I was quite naughty. La. I, I, I think I tested God. Yeah, I asked God questions. I like, God, I think you are real. I think you are quite, you know, you're answering my prayers. But okay, let me, <laughs> so sorry to say this, but let me like challenge you a bit. Uh. I want to ask something that is super impossible. Okay, I know that Li Nanxing is a Christian. How many of you like Li Nanxing? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like more, more than the people who like me. <laughs> yeah, he's a well-beloved uncle in our industry, right? And I was like, I know he's Christian. A lot of people tell me that he's Christian, say that he has changed a lot. And I was like, okay, let Li Nansing, oh, na- I call him Nansing Tagger, come to me personally and share his testimony with me. It was impossible because uh, for actors, right, if we meet in the company, it's always because we are shooting a drama. If not, you know, it's really hard for, for, for me definitely to meet up with him. And I was like, that is impossible. He's not filming then. He was not filming then. I was. And I was like, okay, challenge a bit. Then one day, Rayson Tan, uh, my co-star in the drama that I was filming, Life Fear Not, he shared with me that his testimony is online, on YouTube. And he's like, may, 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 you know, little sister, you can go YouTube, my testimony is there. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll go YouTube. Then I search, 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 search. At night, I was alone at home at night. Then I was, I was watching his YouTube sharing. I think it was in Teochew. And then by the side, I saw Zhou Chu Ming's testimony. I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So I clicked. Then I watch, watch, watch. Oh, wow, wow, very good. And then suddenly by the side, who do you think I saw? <laughs> yes, your favorite actor, Li Nan Singh. His testimony was, but I was like, oh, okay, la. I see Nan Singh Dagger's testimony. So I was just watching, watching, quite nonchalantly, la, like, you know, okay, good, good, good. Then suddenly it struck me that, hey, wow, I prayed this, you know, I prayed for Nan Singh Dagger to share his testimony with me. Personally, face to face. It's 
just a screen separating us. But this is also my prayer answered, I felt. So I was like, wow, this is quite very special. Huh? Like, quite humorous also. Like, big things, small things, he hears what I say to him. So that got me, my faith a bit stronger and stronger in him. Ultimately, one day, uh, Rayson invited me to church and um, I knew that there would be an altar call and the night before, I actually asked God something. I'm, I'm quite irritating. Like, I asked God a lot of things. Huh? Confirm, confirm. And I asked him, okay, I know that you are real and... Um, but I've been following another religion so many years of my life. I don't know which one is for me. Please tell me. Please give me a dream. I don't know where that came from, but I told him, give me a dream. And that night, I really had a dream. I dreamt that everyone from my previous religion appeared. And I even used to help out in the religious place. In the dream, everybody, uh, some people will be asking, how come so long never come? You know, stuff like that. And... I made a decision to turn around and walk away from everything and everyone. When I woke up, I was quite surprised because I was like, wow, isn't this my prayer answered? I asked God, right, to give me a dream. He did. And it was really quite unnatural for me to walk away from something because I used to want to please people in a lot of ways. I would not like intentionally walk away from things. So the next day during altar call, the irritating me asked God again, God, is this for me? Is this for me? And the dream came into my head and I felt like, actually, God has answered everything that I have asked Him. And what more do I want to ask from Him? So I decided to take that leap of faith and, and gave my life to Jesus that day. Wow. Yeah, we should give thanks to God for this. Praise God. So after you get to know God, you know, what else did um, God um, do for you? Or, you know, what was the experience like? Wow, I think the... Can I say the best thing? I guess one of the best things that God did for me was not related to riches, was not related to, wow, I get how many awards. I think the, one of the best things that He has done for me was right after I became a Christian, during a meeting with Pastor Leo, my pastor, one day, for a beginner class as a new believer. So she prayed beforehand to God, uh, where should I start? You know, and she felt the reply was chapter 3, relationship with the Father. She did, didn't understand why, but God told her, just tell Felicia that I am her father. And she didn't understand why. So in the room, you know, she was sitting next, opposite me. She was telling me everything. She told me, Felicia, um, we are starting from chapter 3, relationship with the Father. God just wants me to tell you that He is your Father. And immediately, at 31 years old, uh, in 2015, my mind went back to memories of when I was 20, 21. Those nights when I felt I was alone in the kitchen, kneeling down, crying, you know, wondering why is it me, why is it my dad not here, it's so unfair, why no one to protect me, I was all alone, you know, facing the dark skies, I don't even know who I was talking to. But at that moment, I felt like, wow, God, you remembered? I didn't even remember these nights anymore when I was 31. When I heard that, I started tearing uncontrollably because I felt like God was comforting me and telling me that even when I thought I didn't know Him when I was 21, He was with me. He was comforting me and He saw me. You know, sometimes I feel very unseen, contradictory that I'm on stage, but normal times, sometimes I feel very unseen, I feel very small. But somehow God is telling me that, you know, you're so important to me. Even when you think you're all alone, I remember what you're going through. I saw you. In the darker skies, like, I saw you. And you know what? God never forgets, you know. Three weeks ago, I was at um, Suntec. There was a Christmas event. The worship leader during rehearsals asked me to sing. Oh, this is the stage at Suntec. We um, 
had two shows at Suntec, you know, it's an outreach program for Christmas. Our worship leader suddenly during rehearsals, Felicia, this song, first four lines, why don't you sing it? Actually, I was not supposed to sing. I was supposed to just be some a cappella group, you know, like at the back, you know, just support, right? I, I'm not the lone person singing, you know. And I, of course, a bit afraid lah, because a lot of people, it's like 3,000 over people at one sitting. So that moment, I stopped and I was like, God, you help me, you help me. And immediately, I saw that image again. A back shot of me kneeling down in the kitchen. The different thing is, actually, I saw like Jesus next to me kneeling down next to me, that he, he's beside me. La. And that comforted me. And it also reminds me of how I could sing this song with those emotions that I felt then. I'm curious, you know, how, what, what song is that? Uh, <laughs> Do you want her to sing for us? <laughs> yeah, maybe you should. Yeah, sing together, no, Pastor Kogan. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm sure they want to hear from you. Can we give another big hand? No, if you want to hear us sing. Okay, uh, I'll try my best. I also ask God to help me. This song is "You Raise Me Up," but the Chinese version. Okay, let me try. Wow. <laughs> 困难领导 Yes, this <laughs> That's beautiful <laughs> So the Suntec one is a rehearsal. This is the real thing. <laughs> wow. I think I got enough rehearsals. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, thank you. This song speaks a lot to me because I, 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 I'm not sure if you understand fully the Chinese lyrics. It speaks about a person who is very weary, tired and sorrowful. Uh, when... Difficulties come and it weighs down our heart like rocks and stones. We still choose to stand still wherever we are and wait in the silence, though probably that is difficult by itself, until He comes and keeps us company and comfort us by, by our side. It, it strikes a chord in my heart, the, 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 the lyrics. Now you know that your, I mean, God is your Father. You know, what else did the Lord Fu um, um, do for you? He, okay, I, I want to say I'm very greedy, but you know, I ask God about anything, you know. So after I became a Christian, the second thing that I think He did for me was I needed a place to stay. So I've been renting ever since I was in my 20s, you know. I stayed on my own and because of work, and in 2015, I needed to leave my rented place in one month's time. I didn't have time to, you know, search for houses and all that, and I was quite panicky. So I decided to pray to God. And I listed down everything. You know, and someone probably be specific in your prayers, right? I think Pastor Dan always say, be specific in your prayers. <laughs> I think looking back, I was quite specific. <sighs> I told God, God, Please let the rental not be too high. If someone can help me do the laundry, that would be good. Can help me iron even better. <laughs> I listed everything. Uh, must be near my workplace, have a space big enough for my clothes, my shoes, and comfortable. And a good environment for new believer, you know. Everything I, I specifically listed down. And after prayer, I, I paused, I tried to hear from God. And then, who do you think came into my mind? There was a name that came into my mind. The light drop. Li <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> my coach. 
my coach whom I introduced to all of you just now, she came into my mind and I was a bit, yeah, so this is her house. Her house is very colourful and the walls are blue colour. And uh, yeah, she's the one in the centre. The lady next to me is my producer whom she and my coach actually prayed for my salvation after the travelogue. Then, you know, I came to know God, right? Family member and also my mum. My mum is towards my right-hand side. My coach name came to my mind and at first I was a bit mm, um, apprehensive because at 31, to stay with your coach is very embarrassing. <laughs> very embarrassing, right? Very like <laughs> And I was like, huh, really? Uh? But I felt like God's voice was always right. Can't, cannot really understand, but always right after all my experiences with him. So I decided to pluck up some courage and texted her. And quite immediately she replied. She said that, oh, Felicia, wow, your timing are like quite special. The tenant, my tenant is shifting from the big room to the smaller room. So the bigger room is up for rental. If you want, just come down and have a look. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll go down. And, and because the bigger room, I've never seen it before. It's always locked. Uh, we have visited my coach many times as a student and we always very feel like this room very mysterious. What does it look like? <laughs> you know, kids' imagination run, running around. So, I, I, we went to visit her and... I, I went to visit her and when the door was open, I saw that, wow, the room is uh, very big. It was a room that leads to another room. So, there's two rooms. The first one was for wardrobe, like in wardrobe kind. And then there's the bedroom. I was like, wow. And then I, was, I thought like maybe quite expensive lah, because Holland Village and all that. Firstly, she said, rental, no need lah, no need lah. At first she said, I think three, four hundred dollars. I'm like, coach, cannot lah. I feel bad, right? So cheap. And she's like, okay, okay, seven, eight hundred dollars. That's already such a good price. And then she told me, um, because someone comes in to take care of her morning and night with her laundry, I was like, oh, wow. wow. And ironing. Wow. Ah, then she was like, Felicia, you just give $50, can ready. She will help you do everything. The laundry, wash your clothes, iron your clothes. Even iron my pillowcase. <laughs> ah, I, and it's not like I'm co-offen, it's because my coach wants everything ironed. So she's quite hardcore. So I was like, wow, we got such good thing, right? And... Every day morning when I woke up, I wake up, there'll be fresh juice on the table. Passion fruit, orange juice, one litre. The cold, common kind of like the... Uh, Nelgin, Nelgin, water. At night, there'll be one litre of vegetable juice, fresh one. All the celery, like all that. Because she drinks it herself, so they'll make one more batch for me. 24-7, um, there's worship music in the house. Unbelievable, right? Everything that I speci specifically prayed for came to pass. So Pastor Dan is correct. We must pray specifically. <laughs> the secret. <laughs> yes, and God is so good. I think through him, I was so blessed by my coach. I think there was a very stable environment for me to grow. And it has benefited me a lot. It was a very special time that I had with her. Unfortunately, she passed away in 2017. Um, I felt like she was like another mother to me. A very special moment in my life. That's my coach, uh, last period of her life in a hospital. I was sharing with her about what I did at work. She, 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 she's an angel. You know, in, in her work, quite inconvenient for her. You know, sometimes she needs help with certain things. Wow, she will whole day try not to inconvenience the nurses. Uh. She will not ask the nurse to take this for her, do this for her. She will just do, try everything to do herself. Because she knows that the nurses are very burdened. And she will like spread joy to people in her ward. So I, I'm very blessed to also know her in my life. She has helped me in my work as a Christian as well. Yeah. Thanks for sharing this with us. You know, I'm just, yeah, you know, just, let's just encourage her. You see, I just wonder, you know, maybe just one more question is, um, I mean, you are famous, you are popular. Usually we share good things uh, you know, with people. Why do you want to share with us your, your loss, your fear, your pain, your shame? Why? Why are you sharing all this with us? Um, I guess in my timid moments, I probably would rather hide everything in the cabinet, lock it and you know, everybody just see a, like a normal me, you know. But I feel like God has been 
so instrumental in transforming my life since eight years ago that my heart also yearns to tell someone who might be struggling that you're not alone. There's hope in God. And I think this story came to my mind today that I, I actually didn't share it yesterday, but I felt like it might speak to someone. It's a story that is also not so glamorous, <laughs> but I, I, I had the blessings from my mom to share this. So when I was in my early 20s, maybe like 20, me and my mom, we had our struggles, you know. And I remember one day, we, we had a big fight. I was wanting to get out of the house. I didn't want to stay at home. It was very overwhelming. And my mom refused to give me the keys. And the thing, the, the, so it escalated. Ta, 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 ta. It got so much that my head wanted to like burst already. You know, I don't know what to do already. So out of my emotional state, I actually went to the kitchen. Please don't learn this. I just, I'm just sharing with you my, my past experience. I went to the kitchen, you know, I actually took the kitchen knife and I placed it by my wrist. I wanted to threaten my mom that if she doesn't give me the keys, I would do something to myself. In my mind, I knew that I wouldn't do anything to myself, but I was just so overwhelmed. Nothing is working, nothing helps. That I just took everything in my own hands. So my mom saw this, she started crying, you know, I started crying and shouting at one another and eventually she gave me the keys. After I took the keys, I immediately bolted out from the door, never wanting to come back. That was how I felt. Um, I remember leaving the house with my mom's cries at the background, but in my heart is like, this doesn't feel like home. I don't want to be here. I don't want to come home. You know, these are the emotions that I felt then when I was 20 years old. I think a lot of times, this was like a vicious cycle in our family. Fast forward to 2016. That's one year after I received Christ. I remember one day, I went home for a meal after work. I was running a bit late. I think work ended late, something like that. And I was about, I don't know, five, ten minutes late. And when I opened the door, my mom was cooking. And when she saw me, you know, she started grumbling. La. Bless her soul that she wanted to cook for me. La. That's good, right? But I think uh, she'll be like, also grumbling, like, how come late? La? Ayya, uh, you always like that. La. Da, 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 da. And then in me, when I heard that, I'm like, ah, again. After work so tired, I rushed down from the west to the east. But I hear this again. So I was very upset. The difference is now I have God. La, huh? So I went to my room, locked the door, and I sit on my bed. I still remember I sat on my bed. And I was like, God, I don't want to drink the soup. No, I don't want to drink the soup. Like, I refused to touch the soup. And then, as I was complaining to God, I think God spoke to me. He said something like, go and drink the soup. Y'all laugh means y'all heard similar things before. <laughs> yeah, God says, go and drink the soup. I'm like, ah, ah, like, you know, you're inside, you're like, ah. Why? Go and drink the soup. Okay, I will go and drink the soup. But you never say after that, do what, right? After I drink the soup, I will leave. That's what I have in my heart, lah, you know? So I went out, sat at the table, then my mom served me with the soup, then I started drinking. Drink, drink, I drink very fast. Drink, 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 drink. And then, you know, at the back, she, she went on la, with like uh, some of her grumbles. La, yeah, you always like that. La, da, 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 da. And then la, I was like, okay, once I finish drinking the soup, I'm going to get out of the house. Stand up and walk right out from the door. And that was what I did. I stood up, I walked all the way to the gate. I was opening the gate. Suddenly, God stopped me. I felt God stopped me with a word. A few words. Go back. Stay. And I was struggling because I was like, God, what good can come out from staying? It's the same. Every time it's like, 
in my heart it's like tapai like the same one lah. You know, it will end up like quarrel or like something happen or sad and chaotic. And I was just seeing it as a cycle that happened again and again and again. But by the grace of God, I obeyed and I chose to sit down because I'm quite obedient lah. Huh? So, so I, sat on, I sat on the sofa. So I'm like, wow, in my heart still like, what good can come out from me? I'm like, oh. but I never say a single word. So I remember vividly my mom came out from the kitchen da, 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 and she was like, oh. uh, saying things along the line, you always da, 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 again, 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 da, da. until suddenly something came out from me, which is, I'm never good enough for you. It, this line shocked even myself because I didn't know I have this inside of me. I didn't really know how to express myself. There was a lot of like agony, but how it felt, what it means in words, I couldn't phrase it exactly. But this word just came out from inside of me. I'm never good enough for you. And my mom actually stopped right in her tracks, stopped saying a word. And suddenly she started crying. She said, Oh, Ling Ling, mommy didn't know you felt this way. Uh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you in this way. And then she started crying, 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 talking to me. Then I also started crying and saying more things out from like my gut, you know. And then, cry, 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 both of us ended up in an embrace. We hugged one another on the sofa in the living room where there were countless such similar things that happened in the past, but this time round, something changed. This time round, it ended up in a hug. In the first step of our reconciliation as a mother-daughter relationship. And that I am very thankful because it will never be possible with my own strength. And back to your question, Pastor, you asked why did I share? I just wanted to share, I don't know who needs to hear this, but I want to share that there is hope that God can transform the broken pieces into a beautiful art piece for your life. Today I brought this, um, at first it was a top 10 award for you, <laughs> Pastor. But, uh, this is actually also a ceramic that I made recently. Uh, there's a Japanese art form called Kitsugi. And it used to look broken like that, you know. And with gold lacquer, we will piece the pieces together into a beautiful picture on the right of, 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 of me. And as I was experiencing this art, I felt like actually my life looks like that, you know, broken. However hard I tried to piece things together, I felt like I got hurt in the process. I got hurt by words, I got hurt by people, I start bleeding, not really physically, but really like in my heart, mentally as well. I could do nothing on my own strength. But these eight years with God, I think I've experienced Him so real that His love has helped me piece things together into a beautiful picture that I no longer have to hurt. But, you know, that T-shape always reminds me, like it looks like Jesus on a cross. That Jesus has taken all my pain onto Himself, died on the cross, Resurrection, resurrected on the third day so that I can have a transformed life and I have a new hope in Him. And that's how my life got pieced back bit by bit. And the next line spoke a lot to me. It's, a, it's actually a verse that God is doing a new thing. That I want someone, all of you here, to really know that God can do a new thing in your life do a new thing in your heart. And even though you feel like you're in the wilderness, wasteland, no one knows you, no one understands you, you feel abandoned, God can make a way for you. He can bring new life to you. This is what I've experienced and I wish for you to experience this new life together with me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give thanks to God for that. In fact, I saw your mom just now. So yes. She, she's also a believer. She's a believer. She received Christ one year after me. Thank God. Wow. Wow. That's and just now, amazing. she hugged me again. Yes, yes. So it's a beautiful picture to the, 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 the end of a certain, uh, my sharing just now. Like, yeah. Wonderful.
Can we give her a big hand again for sharing her journey? Yeah. All right. Uh, I understand there's um, some of you speak uh, Mandarin. Maybe you understand Mandarin. I just wonder whether we want to change from Channel 5 to Channel 8 for a while. You have to address those who came just for you. Uh, oh, because, okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, hello, 大家好。Uh,我最近我的戏你们有看吗? <laughs> 八频道。Channel <laughs> 8. Uh, uh, 我想跟你们说谢谢今天圣诞前夕你们选择来到教会来到这里聆听我们的分享我的分享我今天想跟你说的是耶稣非常的爱你他把你拉进这个空间来聆听他的话语我觉得耶稣在我生命中做了很多
conversation and then perceive it quite differently. I'll give you one example. We go to, um, uh, let's say for example, you know, this couple is going to go for a wedding. So the husband's all dressed up, you know, but then the, the wife is still uh, not ready. So after a while, the husband came to the wife and said, are you okay now? You know, we need to go already. You know, she's still standing in front of the wardrobe and then, um, and then with all the dresses and then this is what she said, I got nothing to wear. <laughs> okay, I'm not talking about my wife, okay? <laughs> we see the same thing. There's so many dresses but in her mind, she perceived it differently. You know what I'm talking about? And what God wants us to perceive is this. In the wilderness, there will be a root. In the desert, there will be rivers. Not just river, one river, but rivers. How can that be? Because God is going to do the impossible. She did it for Felicia. And she can do it for you. Do you perceive it? Do you perceive it? And God did three things for her. First, God helped her. God sent people to come alongside her. A coach that reached out to her. And also, um, her, her friend, her colleague, who shared the gospel with her. Not only so, that now today, she's sharing with us. And God is helping her to share her testimony. And God gave her hope. Not just for this life, but life after death. Which we'll talk about it shortly. The truth is that today, she knows that even when she's sharing with you, God is with her. She remembered when she was crying, she thought that she was alone. She's not because God is with her. God is with her. There's a sense of hope. Besides helping her, giving her hope, God gave her a home. A home. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, she just got married and then she has a home. That's beautiful. But I'm talking about God as the Father. And now since God is our Father, we are her brothers and sisters. God gave her a spiritual home. This is what God did for her. But exactly what does she believe in? Four things. I'm going to use four symbols to help you to understand what we believe. The first symbol is a symbol of love. And it means that God loves us. Now turn to someone beside you and say, God loves you. Hey, do it with some conviction. Can Okay, say again, God loves you. Oh, better. Now say, God loves me. Tell yourself. Do you really believe that? God really loves you. Really, God loves you. Don't ever forget this. You see, God is the one who made us. You may say, ah, how can that be? If I, I, if I tell you this mind, you know, it was not here yesterday. This morning I came, boom, it just, it just appeared in front, in, front of, in front of me. You won't believe me. And then we look at each other, wow, you're so handsome, so beautiful. And then we say, oh, boom, you just appear. I, I, I cannot believe. God must, there must be someone who made us. And the Bible tells us that God is the one who made us. And this God is loving, just, and holy. Loving, just, and holy. Because He's holy. And because we do wrong things. So we are separated from God. Sin separates us from God. What sin? Sin basically means doing wrong things. Lying, cheating, you know, and, and some of the things that are not so good, it separates us from God because God is holy. And there are consequences to sin. That's why we are stressed, you know, we are fearful, you know, we, 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 we are afraid that things will drop. And so these are the things that, that affect us because of sin. And we are separated from God forever. Now, God is also just, meaning that if we do wrong things, then there will be punishment. And the punishment is death. Is death. That's why we all have to die. But not only that, one day we're going to face God and face judgment. That's why there's heaven and hell. You say, hey, hell is a bad word. Don't, don't talk about it. But that is for real. So we need to be very careful and be aware that sin will separate us from God forever. But there's a good news. The good news is that Jesus died for us. Jesus has no sin. He didn't do anything wrong. But He chose to die for us on the cross, to pay the penalty for us, to bear the punishment for us, so that if we believe in Him, we can be saved. We can be saved. We can be forgiven. So there is a question that I want to ask you today. And that is, then will you accept Jesus? Will you receive Jesus into your heart? just like Felicia and her mom, 
and even for me. You see, we may be saying that, hey, come on, you know, this one only happens to superstars. You know, superstar, God reach out to them. I'm not a superstar. Now, how many want to be superstars? Okay, nobody. Only I want to be. <laughs> I remember when I was young, I want to be a superstar. Then as I grow older, I look at the mirror, I say, forget it. <laughs> Something wrong with the mirror. <laughs> then I stick to teaching. You see, I'm an honorary person. So God also reaches out to me. Really? Yeah, because when I was young, you know, I, I was quite, quite, quite a mess. You know, I was naughty and, uh, you know, and um, there are a lot of fears. You know, she, um, Felicia always go to the toilet and pray. I don't even dare to go to the toilet <laughs> because it's very dark. You know, so I, I have a lot of fears. The, the worst fear I have is to fail exam because I always fail exam. When B5 failed my English, I had to stay back for one year. Oh, then all level, I fail my English again. Okay, I'm not boasting, right? <laughs> I mean, that's the fact. I just feel my English, you know, just cannot, you know, get it, get, get it uh, clear, you know. And th- there's this fear of, that. so there are times I have nightmares. I woke up and say, oh, fail again. Eh, but I graduated already. <laughs> so, 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 so this uh, fear just haunt me for, for life, la, you know. Yeah, but uh, then I retake my English, you know, and I pass, and then I study hard, I did well, and then I received Christ, and then God bless me. And guess what? I became an English teacher. <laughs> Praise God. MOE certified. MOE certified. Yeah, so, you know, and they pay me for it, you no. Know. Yeah. I didn't pay them for me to teach, you no. Know. They pay me, so I'm so thankful. But after a few days, they realized, that, oh, yeah, maybe you teach mathematics. <laughs> so I taught mathematics. Yeah. I always thought that I was the orange, really. The rotten orange. At the side. But God showed us that we are the apple of His eyes. God loves us so much and God reaches out to me. One day, my, my um, principal asked me in. Usually, principal asked me in, you know, last time when I was young, is to scold me la, or, or discipline master. Right, no? yeah, so I go in and then she sat me down. He said, uh, We have a role for you. We realized that this role, you know, I think you will play it very well. We want you to be the discipline master. I look at her and she, are you sure or not? <laughs> See, when you want to change the culture, you're patient, you're kind. I say, is it? I realized that God has changed my life. You know, like I, I was in a mess. I was drinking, smoking, you know, and gambling, all, you name them. I was a naughty boy. And then now you want to be a discipline master. <laughs> but I pray about it, I realized that, hey, actually I can relate to them very well because I know how they behave. <laughs> and then, you know, sometimes the, the, the boy will tell me, say, Mr. Lo, how you know? Huh? I say, because we seem same one. So the reality is that, you know, I became a discipline master, served the Lord for three years in a school. I enjoyed those seasons, but then the Lord called me to be a pastor, to share my story, to share my journey. Don't teach mathematics, teach God's word in English. (laughs) So we thank God for that, and uh, I'm just so thankful for the journey. The reality is God changed not just her life, Felicia's life, also changed my life. And today I'm happily married. I also married an English teacher <laughs> who will correct my English for the rest of my life. I'm going to get better and better at this, man. To God be the glory. So exactly, you know, where did I start? It started that Christmas when someone invited me. Someone loved me enough to invite me. And someone loved you enough to invite you. That's why you are here today. They invite you. But they don't, they don't know, what to, they don't know what to, how to share with you. So they ask me to share with you. <laughs> and the, the thing is, that even as I share with you, I want you to know these four things. That God loves you. But sin separates us from God. We are no longer with God anymore. But Jesus died for us. He loved us so much that He died for us. The question I have for you is, will you then receive Jesus? Will you then accept Jesus today? today. Do you have this hope? Do you have this hope? Yesterday, I just went to a wake at night and this 90-year-old uh, lady, we know her and the family just gathered together to give thanks, to give thanks to God for a life well lived and knowing that she is with God in heaven. She was once in a choir and today she's singing to God in heaven. This is the hope that we have. 
This is the hope that we boast, that we have in Jesus. Do you need help? How's your family? How's your health? Are there some challenges at work? Why don't you ask God? And when God comes true for you, then you will know He's for real. You see, we only have one life to live. We have no time to play games. If this God is for real, we will follow Him. But if this is not for real, don't waste your time. Why do I want to give my 20, 30 years of my life away and then come to church to serve God? Because this God is for real. It's for real. And He wants to give you a home where you can call Him Father and then we can be brothers and sisters to continue to share this good news with others. So there's a question for you today that only you can answer for yourself. And the question is, will you accept Jesus? Not tomorrow, not next week, but today. Will you accept Jesus into your heart today? Don't miss this. It's Christmas time. It's a special day. I accepted Jesus 28 years ago. My life is never the same. That's why I'm sharing with you. That's why Felicia is sharing with you. And those whom you have brought, who, who brought you here, they, they want you to know that this God is for real and He can change your life. He can change your life. But this question, only you can answer. But you say, okay, I want to accept Jesus, but how? Oh, very simple. As simple as A, B, C. I'm going to teach you some English. A. A means to admit that we have done wrong and need God's forgiveness. You need to know that we have, you know, we, we all do wrong things. We need to admit. If not, then we don't need forgiveness. So we tell God, say, God, okay, we have done wrong things. But I believe. I believe Jesus died for me. He took away the punishment. He saved me. But He's alive today. He's alive today. And C is then to call to Jesus. How? By saying a very simple prayer. You just say the prayer, Jesus will come into your life. You may have questions, you may have doubts, you may not be sure. It's okay. You just say this prayer and let God speak to you and help you. In the days to come, you will know that this God is for real. It's for real. So, this is the prayer. May I just invite all of you to just close your eyes and bow your heads just before God. We've been praying for you and we want you to just say this prayer to God. If your answer to God is, yes, come into my life. You may not be sure. It's okay. Just say this prayer to God and then God will just start to work in your life. So just repeat this prayer after me. I want to encourage the Christians to also pray this together to encourage our friends who may be saying this prayer for the first time. Again, my friends, say this prayer after me if your answer is yes. If your answer is yes. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I have sinned against you. I'm so sorry for the things I've done wrong. Please forgive me. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I now turn from my sins and invite you into my life to be my Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, we've